Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Casey Durango of Go Keto with Casey, where I like to talk about how I lost 97.4 pounds following the ketogenic protocol, how you may be able to lose weight, improve your health, and regain control of your life like I did. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your day. Uh, first of all, I want to say that I want to acknowledge the presence of someone who's, who's um, Tuning in from Colombia, South America, my lovely mate, who's already written, good morning, darling. Actually calls me Darlene. Good morning, Darlene. Although it's darling. So anyway, <clears throat> he's there visiting. Um, hey, thank you very much. Can see and hear you. Thank you, Scott. Um, I appreciate that. Last week, by the way, we had a hiccup in our internet connection, which is very rare. Uh, we have a really good internet service provider. It's a gigabyte fiber optic, but there was a hiccup and their live stream got truncated. So sorry about that. If I lose you, that's okay. Today's topic is keto delusions. Let me start by saying that there are many ways to be successful in life. There are many ways to be healthy and fit and feel good. There are many paths that can lead to the same destination. For me, after 30 years of morbid obesity and all the downside stuff that comes with that, everything from health markers to state of mind to feeling badly about myself, for me, what has worked is the ketogenic protocol. I will share how I learned it. And as I have practiced it, below these many eight, eight and a half plus years, keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day. Total carbs, not net. If it's not on page four, and there is a link at my blog to it, don't eat it, although you don't even need a food list. Don't eat if you're not hungry, which is, for many people, the greatest challenge. Stop eating when you're satiated, not until you're stuffed. And I've added another one. Be patient. First of all, I would like to ask a technical question. It's My screen seems very dark. Am I very dark? It's a rainy day here. I'm going to up this up just a bit. Still doesn't seem enough. Let me try that and let me try this. Yeah, it's a rainy day. Cloudy. Thank you. Um, good morning, Judy. Judy's lost 150 pounds following the ketogenic protocol. That is the protocol. Keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day. Total not net. If it's not on page four, don't eat it. Don't eat it if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. But what do we see everywhere? We see, for, first of all, one delusion, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna be blunt as a spoon here. Some of us struggle to understand the protocol. It's the opposite of what you know we've always been told. Some of us don't want to understand it. Some of us prefer to think there's a quick fix that there's a product we can eat. If there is a product you see, that says keto on the label, it's not. It just isn't. There's not a food that you eat to start burning fat for fuel. What happens when you keep your carbohydrate intake low enough, your liver stops pushing out glucose like a fire hose. And when and so we stop burning glucose, which is sugar, for fuel. And quickly, our body turns over to burning fat or ketones for fuel. That's what happens. And it's not what you do eat that makes that happen. It's what you don't eat. Don't eat the carbs and certainly don't eat junk food. Imagine this. We call it junk food and then we eat it and we give it to our children. But that stuff that says that's keto junk food, it's processed. It's it's uh, they base their labels on net carbs or they don't even try. There is a famous food production company that has a good looking spokesperson who they've so lowered the bar because they're trying to glom onto this whole keto thing that the person earnestly looks into the camera and talks about the product. So they, you know, says so and so and so and so and not a ton of net carbs. What does that even mean? Not a ton of net carbs. So, anywho, that's one delusion. There's not a product. There's not a product. 
lay off the carbs. That's it. Another delusion is that once you do, say you start burning fat for fuel and you you don't have to test whether you're in ketosis or not. You don't have to use the reagent strips, the, the blood meters. You don't have to. Because you can tell whether you start burning fat for fuel because, for one thing, you're, you don't need an afternoon nap. Uh, your clothes start fitting looser. Your appetite is suppressed. But if you are testing and you say, wait a minute, I'm in ketosis. Um, I've got my, my blood meter and I'm in ketosis. So I will, I will lose weight. Delusion. Being in ketosis is, does not mean losing weight. This is not a weight loss protocol. This is a fat burning protocol. If being in ketosis meant losing weight, I would be transparent. I would be see-through. I have been in ketosis nonstop for eight and a half years. I Once a week I check because I have a thing I'm testing. It's not because I need to know. This morning I tested on the blood, but yeah, I'm in ketosis. I tested the blood and my glucose was 69. My weight was down a little bit from yesterday, but I fluctuate like this. So delusion. The goal is to burn fat for fuel because one thing, it's better for our bodies. Our bodies thrive on, um, our body said, I'm sorry, I'm looking down at some of the stuff here. Our bodies thrive on ketones. Our brains thrive on ketones. But burning fat for fuel doesn't mean losing weight. Why? How can that be? Well, because if, if we're eating products or eating a lot of butter, butterproof, bulletproof coffee, MCT oil, fat bombs, if we're eating too much sour cream and mayonnaise, yeah, they're low carb. But if we're Consuming the fat that our body requires for fuel, it won't, doesn't need to burn our, our onboard stores. So delusion. I'm in ketosis, so I will lose weight. Wrong. We don't count calories, but calories count. Delusion. Um, it will fix things in my life. <laughs> now, if the thing that you want fixing is to regulate your blood sugar and you want to maybe relieve joint pain and you want to suppress acid reflux and I think my microphone is tilted wrong. Yeah, those may be improved, almost certainly will be improved if you follow the protocol. You know, it won't be fixed necessarily. It's a bad relationship. As a matter of fact, I hear from people who say that one of the reasons that that they're so grateful to be feeling better because they feel better about themselves and it gives them the self-esteem to get out of bad relationships. Like the old joke is, you know, I just lost 185 pounds. Really? How'd you do that? I kicked my husband out. <laughs> you know, I mean, we don't want that, but sometimes that happens. If you're in a bad relationship, this may not fix it. As a matter of fact, it may exacerbate the issue depending on the dynamic. Uh, this is not a cure for cancer. There is research, and this is not new research. This goes back to Otto Warburg in the 1930s, the Warburg effect, that some cancer cells thrive on glucose, which is sugar. But we can't choke every cancer cell off of sugar because our body needs some level of glucose, which it can make itself. It's not a cure for cancer. But there is ongoing research that some cancer cells respond well to having the fire hose of glucose turned off. Uh, delusion. Uh, if I follow this the way uh, Casey did, I'll get the same results. Well, first of all, you might get much better results than I may be. But I didn't play around, I will tell you. Delusion. Oh, I can just go back to, a, I can go back and forth and it'll be fine. As long as I can get back into ketosis. Well, it might work for you. Wouldn't work for me. I'm an abstainer, not a moderator. Plus, I don't need the, I don't, why am I going to eat 
food that makes me feel cruddy. I felt cruddy for 30 years, physically and e-mentally, which is a mashup of emotionally and mentally. Do what works for you. It wouldn't work for me. I was a gradual loser. I've asked many times, how long did it take to lose the 97.4 pounds? Three years, almost exactly. <laughs> I always like to tell one woman, one person responded, well, that's not so fast. So I replied, well, how much weight did you lose in three years? It's not a, it's not a, it's not a competition and it's not a race. I was thrilled. I lost 47 pounds the first year, which is on average less than a pound a week. A normal, gradual loser. And over the course of two more years to lose the other 50 pounds. And probably, I probably lost 30 pounds the second year. I don't know. I have to go back and look. But you won't necessarily get the same results as I. I'm at my stage of life. I am my stature. I'm a runt. Um, I have a different body chemistry. I just was listening to People's Pharmacy today. Very learned person who spent years researching nutrition, and guess what the conclusion is? They still have to write it up. Is that we're all different. <laughs> and that what, they're talking about nutrition and reactions to foods and to substances. What some people have a reaction to this, it's one way some people have a reaction. It's different. We're all different. Delusion. There's one answer for everybody. No. It's a delusion. You know, um, some people aren't going to make a change, just like people with emphysema and COPD who aren't going to give up smoking. Some people have type 2 diabetes, take ever more increasing amounts of insulin, and maybe have lost a few toes already, but they're not going to give up dessert. That's, a, you know, that's, that's the way it goes. But if you really want to improve things, don't be deluded into thinking a particular meal plan that you pay for or a particular food product that you pay for or that certain nutritional supplements, which are not regulated, are going to get you where you want to be. What happens is you have to lay off the carbs. And logically, does anybody think the potato chips are nutritious or pretzels or ice cream? Sugar has zero nutrition. Just straight up sugar has no nutritional value. It's not food. It's delicious. But it's there's no nutrition. And, th and there's really not nutrition in potato chips or popcorn. Very little in rice. Pasta, mm. you know where there's nutrition? Poultry with the skin and steak with the fat and ground beef and eggs, eggs, eggs. Boy, do we have eggs. And so it's, it's delusional to think that eating food that has no nutrition is going to nourish us. And for goodness sake, children don't need it either. Really? I mean, seriously. All right. Now, my practice is to give my little thing, a little talk, and then I turn my um, attention to the lovely people who show and the comments are made, and I appreciate that. If we do lose connection, my bad. And, by the way, oh, Shameless Commerce Division, you do not need to purchase one thing to be 100% successful at the ketogenic protocol. But you can get my new calendar if it just came out. Just took arrival. I've sent out a bunch of them. You can go to my blog, go to the calendar, and buy them there. It's the, this is my fifth year doing these, I think. And I just come, I had fun designing them. These are my designs and my stuff. And there you go. And you can get that at my blog. And this is a record journal. You can get that at... Amazon. There's also a link to it at my blog. And then below here, I've actually switched my swag over to a different medium. It had been on Teespring. Don't love Teespring. Um, so it's at Spreadshop. But there is also merch at Amazon. If you go to my favorite things, you'll see. Okay, that's done.
And I want to thank patrons, some of whom are here. I have a private support group at patreon.com, link below, where starting at $5 a month, you get 20 pre-recorded video snippets that I make every weekday morning. The suggestions from the patrons themselves going up from their handful of patron-only live streams on Crowdcast, going up from their handful of patron-only video group sessions on Zoom, and going up from their one-on-one coaching session with me. That is all through Patreon. Thank you very much. Is that that? I think that was that. Thank you. Commercial over. Just trying to earn my keep, y'all. Plus, I like the creating bit. Can we put on my glasses and see what we've got? Michelle Tamayo. Hi. Uh, okay, Michelle Tamayo. On my way to buy a food for keto. Don't know what that means. Veggies and protein. Okay, right. Okay. Um, can you guys see and hear me? The comments seem to have stopped all of a sudden. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Can anyone let me know if you can see and hear me? Nanchi, can you let me know? Okay, thank you. I guess everyone's busy doing other things. Um, yep, thank you, writes Donna Stafford. Does anyone have uh, anything they'd like? Oh, Judy Tucker. They need to advertise more holding up a cow, beef. It's what makes you healthy. Absolutely. Now, Judy lost 150 pounds. She's a farmer. She was a vegetarian. She was trying to lose weight, and she was a vegetarian for years in cattle country. And uh, she recently got fired by her doctor, her obese doctor, who said, if you're going to keep on, now she's lost 150 pounds, and come off seven medications, Judy, if you're going to keep that up, I can't, I can't be held responsible. Hey, Nancy, it's been a while. like to see you. Clear as a bell. Thank you. Thank you, honey. Oh, by the way, Nanchi, I got another, um, I got, bought a replacement for that hub. So hopefully things will be a little bit more stable. He's been on me to get a new one. Good morning from Arkansas, writes Vicki Boom. And uh, Judy writes, selling cattle today. Missed you at Dr. Westman's on the on the live. Thank you, Shayla Johnson. I, I'm not sure he, I think you're kind. I don't, I don't know that he needs me anymore. Got eggs available this week. Yes, I do, Patricia. Uh, now, Trish, remember that the meetup, if you're thinking of coming to Greensboro, is the second Monday of the month. So it, our meetup in Greensboro, uh, this is just a wine style, so I just go and we sit around and talk, is the second Monday. So it's a week from this coming Monday. Off over 10 medications, right? Oh, my God. So, and that's why in the title of this is Keto Delusions, Don't Be Fooled. The truth is awesome enough. The truth is you lay off the carbs and it's amazing what happens. You don't have to employ magical thinking. Yeah, certainly don't be gullible. Don't be gullible. Do we not think that if there were such things as keto chocolate nut clusters, that's just candy, y'all. It's just candy. They just slap the word keto on it. If we did, do we not... Do you think that if drinking exogenous ketones made people lose weight, it wouldn't be? By the way, there is a person out there with a name like mine who sells exogenous ketones. That person is not me. I get every now and again messages, hey, where's my welcome kit? Hey, can you give me the discount code for the ketones? That's not me. I will never do that. If you're drinking, you don't need to drink ketones. Your body will produce them for free. Dr. Schungal, yes, missed you at the support group live. I had uh, my, I didn't go on Tuesday. They're talking about the Durham support group meeting with Dr. Eric Westman. And I've been moderating them with him for a, a, a long time. And I couldn't make it Tuesday. So he did it by himself. I'm sure he handled it just fine. Hello from Punta Caña on vacation and struggling, trying to stick with protein, lots of sauces and things out of my control. Okay, that's Teresa Graham. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, sauces, they almost always have sugar in them because they taste good. So if you can, now if you're in Puta Caña, you should be able to get carne asada, which is just cut beef, it's like steak. Carne asada, carne molida, which is ground beef, but you should be able to do that. Just ask for any anything that has sauce, have it on the side or leave it off. Or, um, you know, get a roast chicken. You can do it. You can do it. Um, 
keto four way. Do you exercise or do you ex or did you exercise when losing weight? I can't do cardio. Okay. Thank you for the question. I lost the majority of the weight not exercising. As a matter of fact, it was a revelation. I tried all the things that we try. If you go to my blog, you can see photos from the summer of the triathlons. Oh my God. Hauling an extra hundred, hundred plus pounds, trying to ride bikes and swim. Swimming is, I'm not very fast, but I floated really well because I was so fat and so-called jogging. No, the exercise that I did a summer of triathlons, I think it was four or five. I trained for and participated in. I lost 11 pounds over the course of the summer and I was hungry and sore all the time. No, exercise is very good for core strength and mental clarity. I mean, it helps if you, you know, kind of blows out the cobwebs if you like it. Bone, you know, what did I say? Bone density, yes. But it's not effective for fat loss. It's just not effective. It is not effective. That is, that's another delusion. Weight loss delusion. Move more, eat less, and you'll lose weight. No. Um, but I have employed exercise because I want to remain as strong as possible. And I want to, I, I've gotten kind of, woo, scale doesn't really fluctuate, but I want to feel tauter, not muscle bound, but I want to feel tauter. So I was very regimented on the total gym, which I like. And yeah, and that and I, I tend to lay in muscle. Man, it is really dark, isn't it? It's just the weird lighting in here. Okay. Um, I'd kind of gotten lackadaisical about it, and that's why I'm not feeling as taut. But I do employ the total gym. It's not cardio. You don't need to aerobic exercise might make you feel better. My husband's a cyclist. He likes it. But strength training, which you can do from a sitting position, you can do resistance training with bands. Yes, I highly recommend it, not for fat loss, but for bone density, core strength, and uh, being as strong as you can be. <laughs> Lisa Aiello writes, I'm an abstainer too. I don't want to ever cheat. Down 30 pounds this year. Congratulations. Um, Judy Tucker writes, oh, it's moving too fast. Okay. Pfizer Girl. Hi from Memphis. What are your thoughts on keto along with one meal a day? You know, this so many gimmicks. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Eat if you're hungry. Eat no matter, if you're hungry, eat no matter what the clock reads. If you're not hungry, don't eat no matter what the clock reads. Th that's magical thinking too that, you know, okay, so a lot of people do time-restricted eating, which is what it really should be called, other than that F word. Um, okay, so you have your feeding window, which always sounds like, you know, you're a horse and you're sticking your head out the window into a trough. Feeding window. If that's magical, what's, what's going to happen when we go back to Eastern Standard Time here in the United States, in parts of the United States? No, don't eat if you're not hungry. You know, it's interesting. You tell obese people, move more, eat less. I can't, I just can't eat less. And then you tell them, oh, just eat one meal a day. Oh, okay. <laughs> if it works, great. But there's nothing magical about it. Judy writes, I'll be 70 years young on the 9th. Never been healthier. Joni Sanchez writes, good morning, sunshine, Casey. D, hey D, I ended up telling him, I ended up telling him things I learned from you, like how carbs are something our body can make, not fat or protein. Finally shut him down with you don't get a vote on what I eat. I must have missed something. Oh, just got into it with a super critical controlling father-in-law. Wasn't looking for a fight. Just mentioned I wasn't eating carbs and he blew up about how I need carbs to stay healthy and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Now, I think you meant we don't need carbs for glucose. Our bodies can make glucose. We don't need carbs. They are not an essential macronutrient. Essential meaning we must consume it by mouth to get the benefits. Yes, we need fat and protein, just as you said. Our bodies require the amino acids that are only found in fat and protein, but carbs are not essential. So good for you. And I'm sorry you have to put up with that. <laughs> and that is actually, I don't think I included in this year's calendar. Nobody gets a vote on what we eat. I don't think I put that in this year. Our weekly video Bible study, Scott, not looking too dark here. Good. Thank you. 
It looks very, the screen looks very dark here. Thank you, Scott. Uh, Trish Newbert, meeting with Casey at Wine Styles on Monday the 14th. Yay, good. Uh, and this is just free. It's just if you're in the Greensboro area, you know, I always take a book because I know where, never know where, whether anyone's going to show up. And we just sit around and it's half price, wine by the glass. Um, Diana from Australia. Good morning from Perth, Western Australia. You're a long way away. Long way away. Mm. Hashtag Casey's Pink Drink. I get asked about it almost every time, so I'll say. Tumbler full of ice, diet tonic water, a splash of diet cranberry, and a squeeze of lime. I better be eating some limes, right, honey? We bought a whole bag of limes at Costco right before he left. So I will be enjoying limes. Okay, does anyone have a comment or... Oh, uh, I'm still... So a few weeks ago, few weeks ago, I did a kind of a Q&A, ask me anything type of thing. So I did something on my blog, which is questions slash suggestions or something like that. And I am collecting. People have written and said, can you talk about... Bah, 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 bah. And I am collecting those and I will be writing blog posts and making videos about it. So thank you. And I, I, I won't share anybody's information, but I will share the emails, but they're red. Hey, Betty, look about, I love your pink drink. I make it all the time. So refreshing. That is why I drink it. When I'm talking a lot, I need something a little tart. <laughs> Patricia Newber writes, Diana, uh, Diana, we are opposite is 926 AM here. And this time tomorrow, it will be 826. I love it. I wish that we just leave everything at standard time. So hopefully I've covered everything I wanted to make. Almost everything I talk about, you can find at my blog. Links to the book, links to the calendar, links to page four, links to my favorite things. Dina from Australia. Keto products are bombarding the shelves in Oz right now. They're everywhere. They are everywhere here. Costco has an entire section. I just shake my head. No, like again, personal responsibility comes in here at some point. Yes, if they're they're trying to take advantage of gullible people by putting keto on it. So don't be gullible. I'm telling you, there is no, why, why not? Why can't you have a box of keto clusters that's, you know, low carb? Because the thing that makes it shelf staple, that it can be, on the shelf is the same stuff they have to put in every other daggum processed food to make it shelf stable. And those things are high in starch, which is carb, carbs. And if they're touting their net carbs on the front, turn around, look at the box on the back, at least in the United States. I know not everywhere in the world do they have to put total carbs. But in the U.S., total carbs is what you want to look at. And look at serving size. For instance, mayonnaise, zero carbs, serving size, 14 grams is a serving, and that's 100 calories. And 14 grams by weight of mayonnaise is essentially a shmia of mayonnaise. So look at total carbs per serving, look at serving size. And if it's a food, even if it's a perfectly legit low-carb food, and you find yourself having to fight with your brain to to not eat more than you require, there's no shame in saying, I don't bring that into my house, whatever it might be. For some people, it's pork rinds. Pork rinds, no carbs. But nobody needs a bag of pork rinds because there are calories and there's no nutrition. So if that's a thing for you, no shame. Yes, should we be able to say, I'm not going to eat more than 10 pork rinds? Yes, we should be able to. And maybe we can. And maybe it would be a good discipline. But there are a whole lot of other things we have to deal with. So just take it off the list of things you have to deal with. Okay, grandmother clock is chiming. Okay, Michelle Tamayo, is it okay to drink hot organic cocoa with almond milk on occasion? Or should chocolate be avoided in the beginning? That is up to you. Oh, Kathy Sieber, I got your card from the post office yesterday. I haven't op even opened it yet. I was saving that for this morning. Thank you. And I, it's taking me so long because I only go to the post office uh, irregularly. So chocolate depends on the chocolate. Chocolate is quite bitter. 
So you have to be careful what's in the chocolate. Organic doesn't make it low carb, by the way, because cocoa, cacao is bitter. So sweeteners are added to it to make it palatable. Almond milk, I have no, I have no opinion on, on almond milk. Look at the carbs and the serving size. If it'll keep you from, you know, buying a Snickers bar, then yes. If you feel like it's going to tip you over into wanting more and more, we are all different. Um, uh-oh, Donna Stafford writes, been sick and way too many steroids. I've got to get my attitude back. You know, steroids are tough. They just are. And Judy Tucker asks, does artificial sweeteners bother you? Are you asking me, Judy? No, they don't. Some people, they do. For some people, even the sensation of sweet makes them have to start fighting with their brain about, I want more sweet. That do It does not have that effect on me. It does not impact my blood sugar, clearly. This is diet tonic water, and I would have had, last night I would have had diet tonic water with vodka in it. And I put Splend in my coffee. And my blood sugar was 69 this morning. So it doesn't impact me, but you have to pay attention. Now, Doc Schwungal makes a good point. Almond milk is not on page four. Almonds are not on page four. Nuts are not on page four. Almond flour is not on page four. This is another thing. Delusional thinking is I'm trying to overcome my unhealthy relationship with food. So I think I'm going to immerse myself in videos about, cookbooks about, Facebook groups about, Instagram channels about food. Step away from the food. Step away from it. Step away. You know, someone in recovery from Alcohol does not need to be following cocktail mixing channels or Facebook groups about the latest and greatest cocktail in a bottle. Step away. Food is not the boss of me anymore. I'm getting ready to design a t-shirt for both on the Amazon merch and for the spread shop. It's just not the fancy food is not the boss of me. It's just going to be food is not the boss of me, period. Because that is a victory. For those of us who felt victimized by food for decades, prisoners of food, and I'm out of prison. Okay, honey, I hope if you, I hope you get a bike ride in today. If you do, be careful, and I hope the Garmin Live track works. And uh, it's rainy here, so I won't be working in the yard like I planned, but I'll get other things done. I miss you. It's going to be a long month. And thank you guys so much for allowing me to be part of your day. And go to my blog to see if about the calendar, the book, and the what, 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 and thank you to patrons. I truly appreciate it. Okay, thanks.